With the release of Endwalker, healers are in an interesting position right now. There are some really good pros and some not so good cons. Make sure to watch this video in its entirety as it really helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Let's go over it and talk about our two shield healers and peer healers. We're gonna go over the main differences so you can figure out which one you might wanna play next. This will be listed by unlock levels of each job as well as general breakdown of focus and content. The peer healers being White Mage and Astro that will focus more on regen effects and shield healers being Scholar and Sage focusing more on direct barriers and damage mitigation. Let's first start with our peer healer, White Mage. Unlocked at level 1 in Gridania, White Mage has to be the most beginner friendly job as it's very straightforward. Level 50 and below content, you're focused on getting used to using your level 35 skill regen as well as your level 50 skill medica 2. At this point, you're just keeping the tank's health up, DPSing and dotting each enemy. Most healers at this stage are very straightforward and white mage being at the top of the list at this level. Between 50 and 90 content, you will unlock the job ability, which are lilies. When using Aflatus Rapture or Aflatus Solus, you will gain blood lilies, which can be used as a big DPS nuke. Though generally we don't focus on this because it can be a DPS loss. You also get this beautiful skill called Temperance that gives you angel wings and boosts your healing as well as providing damage mitigation for the party. Want to look super fancy? When you hit level 90, you get Liturgy of the Bell, which is a healing over time for you and your party. It's also really cool looking. White Mage both has a lot of strong raw healing power and is perfect for beginners. Though I will say with the new patch of Endwalker, I personally feel like White Mage is the worst playable out of all four of the healer jobs. And what I mean by that? is it's not bad, it's just a little bland. So if you just wanna do some direct heals, some direct regens, and not really have to worry about too much button pressing, then White Mage is for you. Let's move on to Scholar, which is our first shield healer unlocked at level 30 through leveling Arcanist in Limza Lomenza. Right from the beginning, you'll have your fairy unlocked, which is your job specific ability. The fairy is a regen over time that will just automatically heal anyone who is less than 100% HP. Level 15 below, you won't really actually have to do much in terms of healing as your fairy will take care of most of the healing up until around 30. At that point, you'll have access to Add Loquium, which is your main shield heal, as well as Sucker, which is your AoE shield heal. You'll notice that you won't have much raw healing ability as a white mage, but the idea is that you can utilize the small heal and put up a shield to prevent further damage. That being said, you never really spam Ad Loquium. You more generally go from Ad Loquium to Physic, which is your base heal, back to Ad Loquium. But again, with the new expansion, you really don't have to worry about that as the fairy takes care of most of the healing anyway. You will also have your fairy abilities, which will give you a regen and some damage mitigation. It will take some time I'm getting used to using the fairy placement as well as clipping that could happen when using multiple skills with the fairy, but that was greatly reduced with Endwalker's release, so it should feel a little more intuitive now. Not only that, you also have your job ability, which is Ether Flow, which is kind of like your direct heals. Already, scholars have far more abilities to utilize than White Mage. Level 50 to 90 content, both your fairy abilities and your Ether ability start to take off. Your main Ether ability that you will be utilizing a lot is Sacred Soil, which is technically a 10% damage mitigation on a 30 second cooldown. For your shields, you'll be utilizing a very important ability called Resuscitation, which will give you a critical shield for Ad Loquium, which is my favorite way to shield the entire party by pairing it with deployment tactics. You also have an AoE healing ether ability, indomitability, and your delayed healing ability, excogitation. Between this and your seraph ability that you get at level 80 that evolves your fairy temporarily and provides even more heals and shields, Scholar is just a super fun job to play. We can't forget about our infamous level 90 ability expedient, which not only makes your party run fast, which admittedly is very helpful, but also provides damage mitigation as well. I think scholars have really come into their own and I for one quite like that the position scholar is in and it's pretty up there on the tier of healers. Let's move on to our second regen healer, Astrologian. And I will be pronouncing Astrologian like this because this is how Sir Imerick pronounces it. Unlocked at level 30 in Heavensward Expansion, located in Ishgard. Now I'm going to be 
upfront and say Astro is probably the most advanced job as far as button pressing for later levels and even mid levels. It is a very busy job and a lot of button pressing, but if you're willing to put in the time, it will really pay off. Under level 50, it's basically the same as White Mage with a single target regen ability aspected Benefic and an AoE ability aspect Helios. Where Astro really shines is in its job ability draw, which allows you to draw cards and apply them to teammates for an increased damage of 6%. Even right here, you can see why a lot of players tend to switch to Astro since technically you can help your party do more damage, which means doing content faster and gives you something to focus on other than just healing and DPSing. Other than that, it's just business as usual with regens on the tank, heal is needed, and DPS. Level 50 to 90 content, this is where Astro comes into its prime with Divination, which is a party-wide damage increase of 6%, and yes, this does stack with cards. The new ability related to your cards and what signs you draw is Astrodyne, which has turned into a self-buff ability. One to three signs will give you MP regeneration, reduced spell cast time, recast time, and auto attack, and an increase of damage dealt and healing potency for yourself. So basically you become Super Saiyan for 15 seconds, then it's off to the OG CD races with many hills of Celestial Opposition, Earthly Star, and Horoscope to say a few. After looking at the new ability Astrodyne, it's great, but it's not game breaking. You do have another draw system, although this one is much simpler. Minor Arcana, which allows you to draw a Lord of Crowns or Lady of Crowns for either AoE damage or AoE healing, respectively. If you thought that was it, well, we probably have the most godly healer ability in the game and my personal favorite, Neutral Sect, which basically gives you the best healing abilities for 20 seconds. This will give you 20% healing potency as well as allowing you to regen and shield with your aspected abilities, Benefic and Helios. Pair this with Lightspeed for instant casts on those abilities and basically heal and shield by yourself for 20 seconds. Honestly, if you like a big learning curve and you like to be busy, 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 and to have a lot of utility, then Astro is for you. Last but certainly not least is Sage, unlocked at level 70 in Limsa Lominza. Up front, if you've played any other healer up to Endwalker, Sage is going to be a little bit more of a learning curve as it's a very different playstyle. If you haven't played another healer, then you won't have to worry about pre-existing habits. Sage is not only a shield healer, but a damage mitigation specialist with three abilities giving a party member or party a 10% damage decrease taken. My personal opinion, the goal of Sage is to not let your party drop to critical HP as you have so much versatility in keeping their health up with mitigation and shields. Sage is an advanced job at first, but once it clicks for you and you know what the abilities do, it is easily the funnest healer job to play. Below level 50 content, this is where you're gonna get used to putting on Cardia, which you can think of as a fairy like Scholar. It will heal whoever you apply this to over time, but only when you're damaging your enemy with certain abilities. So you are rewarded for doing DPS. Square Enix, I see you. The other not new thing, but it is new for GCD hills, is getting used to accessing your shield abilities and dots by using Eucrasia. So we have your main spells, Diagnosis, single target heal, Prognosis, AOE heal, and Dosis, single target attack. Simply put, you'll have to cast Eucrasia, which turns these three main spells into your shield healing, which is Eucrasian Diagnosis, single target heal and shield, Eucrasian Prognosis, AOE heal and shield, and Eucrasian Dosis, which is your damage over time. This kind of threw me off at first, but when you're dotting an enemy and you have to cast Eucrasia to access your dot, it was just a little bit of a weird time. Wild, right? You'll also have your Dicrasia, which is just your AoE attack. We then have our job abilities, which are Adergal. This is probably one of my favorite parts of Sage, which is just stacks of Adergal every 20 seconds in or out of battle, which you can use on four abilities, two single target healing abilities and two AoE healing abilities, which all give you MP back and some give you damage mitigation. So you'll wanna use these pretty regularly. Level 50 to 90 content, 
you basically learn the base of your healing kit at this point, and honestly, you just keep getting more and more support OGCDs. Hyma, Single Target, and Panhyma AoE, which are two separate shield abilities that basically give you big stacks of shield, and as they break, it just reapplies another shield until all five are broken. Oh, you didn't use all five stacks of shield? Then it just turns into a big fat heal for the party. You also have Toxicon, which is another AoE damage ability, which you only get when you get Adder Sting stacks. Now this may seem confusing, but you get Adder Sting stacks by using Eucrasian Diagnosis. So that's just your single target heal and shield, and it breaks on a party member. My favorite way to get these stacks of Adder Sting in order to use Toxicon is just Eucrasian Diagnosis every party member before a boss battle and the first aoe is going to break the shield and you have three stacks it might sound difficult but honestly you will stack things like crazy to keep your tank alive anyway i feel like they put a lot of time into thinking about how sage will work and sage is perfectly organized and structured for endwalker speaking of thinking of everything icarus a gap closer for a healer Weirdly enough, I use this all the time, if not to just keep up with the tank when he's pulling, but also to jump in and do your AOE damage ability if you're too far away. Our level 90 ability pretty much sums up Sage perfectly, which is big damage and heal all in one GCD ability. Damage in a straight line from you restores everyone's HP by 600 potency and restores HP to the party member with Cardia. But of course, it has a 120 second cooldown. Again, it seems like a lot, but just a few dungeons, I started to pick it up pretty quickly, and it's making its run for my number one spot as my main healer. I probably will go with Sage and Astro Split just to have a regen healer and a shield healer. No matter what healer you choose, you will find no shortage of fun. As more jobs are coming out, they do get more and more advanced in different ways, and I really couldn't be happier. Comment down below on what healer you want to try or are going to try and why it's your favorite. I also have practical healing guides coming out, so make sure to Limit Break 3 and hit that notification bell so you can get informed of whenever I have these videos come out. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and if this has intrigued you enough in picking up one of these amazing healer jobs, then that makes me happy. I want to give a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters for your continued support allows me to keep making content for this channel. You can connect with me on Discord or find ways to support by clicking that Linktree link in the description box down below. If you want to watch more Final Fantasy guides, then you can click here.